All right, realism. Realism in the arts may be generally defined as an attempt to represent subject matter truthfully without artificially and avoiding artistic conventions, implausible, exotic, and supernatural elements. The term originated in the 19th century and was used to describe the work of Gustave Corbett and a group of painters who rejected idealization, focusing instead on everyday life. Realism. All right, The Stone Breakers by Corbett. The Stone Breakers realizes Corbett's aim of informing the masses about the harsh existence of peasant workers during his time by revealing the trying conditions that miners had to face so as to encourage people to aid them. The painting shows two peasants, a boy, which is uh, here on the left, and uh, a much older man here on the right. Um, and a grown man in tatters slaving away on boulders with mallets. From a cursory glance, we immediately realize the depth and sharpness of the canvas. The painting is rigidly detailed to the point where it is devoid of any romanticism, a quality that is unique to realism. Secondly, we notice that the colors used are monotonous, which reflects the languishing tone of the painting while the two peasants toil away at stones. This allows Corbett to draw emphasis on the hardship that peasants had to overcome. Third, the manner in which Corbett depicts the boy who is too young to carry the stone. So you can see here uh, he is struggling quite a bit trying to pick up this load. And the man who is too old to continue breaking the stones demonstrates his sympathy for the disadvantaged workers. So uh, the fact that he's on his knees trying to break these stones for road work uh, indicates the, um, his sympathy for uh, the people and the peasants of the time. This is The Stone Breakers by Corbett. All right, The Hireling Shepherd <clears throat> is painted by William Hunt. It represents a shepherd neglecting his flock in favor of an attractive country girl whom he shows a death head's hawk moth, uh, which is an actual, actual moth in his hand right here. Um, in Hunt's painting, the shepherd ignores his flock of sheep who wander over a ditch and into a field of corn. Uh, and you can see that's the direction of the painting is going from left to right as they wander into the cornfield. Um, this violation of boundaries is paralleled by the shepherd's physical intrusions into the personal space of the young woman, who responds in an ambiguous way that might be interpreted as complicity or as knowing skepticism. And uh, that's kind of my take on it by the look of her face. As he shows her the moth, he places his arm around her shoulder. Um, so once again, here's the moth, and uh, you know he's trying to get in a little close with this young country um, miss. This is the Hireling Shepherd by William Hunt. All right, let's take a look at another one of William Hunt's uh, paintings called "The Awakening of Conscience." Um, initially, the painting would appear to be one of momentary disagreement between a husband and wife, brother and sister, but the title and a host of symbols within the painting make it clear that this is a mistress and her lover. The woman's clasped hands provide a focal point and the position of her left hand emphasizes the absence of a wedding ring. Around the room are dotted reminders of her kept status and her wasted life. The cat beneath the table toying with a bird, uh, the clock concealed under glass, um, up here, indicating the movement of time. The tapestry, which hangs unfinished on the piano, uh, which is over in this direction. And the threads that are uh, lie unraveled on the floor. All of those indicate a um, woman whose time is passing. The discarded glove and top hat thrown on the table suggest a hurried um, meeting, which is over here on the left. Uh, the room is too cluttered and gaudy to be a Victorian family home. The bright colors, unscuffed carpet, and pristine, highly polished furniture speak of a room recently furnished for a mistress. Um, in this painting, um, the mirror on the wall provides a tantalizing glimpse of the scene. The window opening out onto a spring garden in direct contrast to the images of the entrapment within the room is flooded with sunlight. So you can see here the mirror in the background um, showing what the 
couple is seems to be looking at. The woman's face does not display a look of shock that she has been surprised with her lover. Whatever her, attracts her is outside of both the room and her relationship. The Awakening of Conscience by William Hunt. This is Rosa Bonner's uh, The Horse Fair, 1855. Uh, Bonner's best-known painting shows a horse market held in Paris on a tree-lined boulevard near the asylum, which is visible in the left background. So here's the trees. Um, we've got the asylum back here in the back, and here are all the gentlemen working with the horses at, uh, you know, what it is, the horse fair, where they buy and sell horses, and there's people in the background looking to purchase a horse. For a year and a half, Bonner sketched there uh, twice a week, dressing as a man to discourage attention. Boner was well established as an animal painter, and when the painting debuted at the Paris Salon, it received wide praise. Um, she referred to the horse fair as her own Parthenon frieze. This is the horse fair by Boner. All right, Corbett's the painter's studio. The painter's studio is a painting of a painter's studio. However, it seems more like a party. Roughly 25 people, including Corbett, are gathered amongst the mural-covered walls. So you can see in the background there is just murals everywhere. Uh, here's part of a mural on the wall right here, um, almost a Christ-like uh, figure with you know a skull down here. Here's Corbett himself uh, in the process of painting. An abundance of light allows detail both in the painting Corbett is working on and in the painting itself. The most necessary face among the sea of people is a naked woman standing behind Corbett watching him paint. Her head is tilted to the side and her expression is still as she studies the painting for meaning. Her shoulders are relaxed and she seems indifferent to her nakedness in relation to the people surrounding her. The white sheet that covers her front and leaves her backside exposed surmounts her. Clearly a subject, it is very this very woman who creates the sense of progression of time. Either she has been painted already, or she is waiting to be painted next. So you can see her with her sheet right here. Um, we've got all these other people in the room. Uh, we've got you know a guy reading a book over here. We've got little kids playing with dogs and animals over here. Uh, we've got some um, art, um, some musicians in this area. So it is a very busy picture, a very busy picture indeed. Uh, the Painter's Studio by Corbett. All right, The Gleaners by Millet, 1857, uh, depicts three women, three peasant women, gleaning a field of stray grains of wheat after the harvest. The painting is famous for featuring a sympathetic way what were the lowest ranks of rural society. This was received poorly by the French upper class. Um, it was first unveiled in 1857, where it immediately drew negative criticism from the middle and upper classes who viewed the topic with suspicion. Uh, to them, it was a reminder that French society was built upon the labor of the working masses and la landowners linked this working class with the growing movement of socialism. Um, so you, here you can see the ladies uh, picking up small grains of wheat that have been left over from the harvest and putting them in their bags so they can make some bread for their families at home. This is the Gleaners by Millet. All right, the Angelus by Millet. This painting depicts two peasants bowing in a field over a basket of potatoes to say a prayer. Angelus, that together with the ringing of the bell from the church on the horizon marks the end of the day work. So here we go, their church ringing the bell, and it's the end of the day. Um, it shows two peasants during the potato harvest in France with the view of the church in the background. At their feet is a small basket of potatoes, and around them a cart and a pitchfork. So you can see here the cart, pitchfork, and, you know, they're ending the day's work. Various interpretations of the relationship between the two peasants have been made, such as, you know, their colleagues at work, husband and wife pair, farmer and perhaps maidservant. Salivar Dali insisted that this was a funeral scene, not a prayer ritual at all and that the couple were portrayed praying and mourning over their dead infant. Although this was a very unpopular view, at his insistence, the Louvre, which is where this painting is housed, x-rayed the painting showing a small coffin overpainted by the basket. This is the Angelus by Millet. Hi, this is Dalmier's third 
class carriage. The third class carriage evidences Delamere's interest as also seen in his graphic works in the lives of working class Parisians, people from Paris. Third class railway carriages were cramped, dirty, open compartments with hard benches filled with those who could not afford second or first class tickets. In the bench facing the viewer are seated from the left a woman holding her baby, as you can see here on the left, and an older woman with her hands clasped atop a basket, as well as a young boy who is leaning against the older lady asleep. Seated behind them are anonymous rows of men and women. This is Third Class Carriage by Dalmere.